In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with the Google Gemini API in Python. First, I'll show you how to get an API key from the AI Studio, and then I'll show you how to send a request to one of the Gemini AI models. After that, I'll show you how to modify the request so you can customize the system prompt, send files, and then allow the AI to call functions you've defined. So let's get started now by going to the Google AI Studio. You can do this by going to ai.dev in your browser, and it's going to redirect you to the AI Studio. And here it's redirected. I guess it's a little slow right now. Um, but the idea is in the lower left-hand corner, we have this button called Get API Key. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click that. And I'm going to click on the Create API Key button up here on the uh, upper right. And then if I already have a project created, uh, I can select that project or I can select the uh, generated one that I have from earlier. So I'll click on this create API key in existing project. So as long as you have a Google account, you can get this. You don't have to do anything special. Just go to AI.dev. So it's just generating a key for me. And then once it's done, I'm going to go ahead and copy that key. So here we see my API key. I'm just going to hit copy here. And now I can go over to the code and work with this API. So let's jump over to the code. And the first thing I want to do is because I am going to need to install the library is I want to set up an environment where I can install things. So for some people, this will be virtual environments. For me, I'm going to use UV, which will manage my virtual environment for me. So I'm just going to do UV init here just to create a project. The files here aren't important except for main.py. This is where I'm going to write my code. So I'm going to delete everything there and start from scratch. So the first thing I need to do is I need to install the library. So we just saw the GitHub repo. I'm going to go ahead and install that library. So I'm going to do UV add and then Google dash gen AI. So if you're using pip, you can do pip install Google dash gen AI, whatever you prefer. They're both going to install it. So remember, I have the API key on my clipboard. So if I paste it in here, we see it. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to get that into my environment. So I'm using Linux here. So I'm going to do export and then Gemini underscore API underscore key equals. And then I'm going to paste in my API key here. If you're using Windows, it's going to be set Gemini API key and then equals to whatever the value is. But the point is, it's the same. You're putting your API key in your environment. So when you run the code, it detects your API key because you use the name that it's going to be looking for. So now let me go up here and let me start writing some things to import. So the first thing to import is Gen AI. So from Google, import Gen AI. And then later, I'm going to need something called types. So from Google dot Gen AI, import types. So I'll need that a little later in the video, but I'll import it now. And then what I want to do is I want to create a client. So we'll do client equals, and then I'll take this gen AI that I imported and do dot client on it. So in this dot client, I can pass in the API key. If I want it, I can do like API key equals and then pass the value here. But because I put the value in the environment, it's going to pick it up automatically. So for some reason, if you can't use the environment, then you can go ahead and work with it this way. But I recommend the environment approach because it's a lot easier. So I'll go ahead and delete that. And now what I want to do is I want to set up a call to the AI so I can use it in the way that we're all familiar with, which is basically like saying something to it or asking a question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called response, which is going to hold the response from the AI. I'm going to use the client and on the client, I can do client.models.generate underscore content. And this takes in two important things. So one will be the model. So which model do I want to use from Google, which I'll get in a second and then contents, right? So this is the text that I'm sending over to the AI. So I can say how many countries are in the Americas, right? So that's going to be my question, but I need to get a model. So let's go back over to the AI studio and I'll go to the main uh, chat here. And if we look here on the right, um, we're going to have the ability to select a different model. So the newest model at the time of recording this video is Nano Banana, but I can't use that in the API yet. So what I can use is one of these slightly older ones. So uh, 2.5 Pro, 2.5 Flash, uh, 2.5 Flash Lite. I'll just go ahead and pick Flash. So what I can do is I can click on this. I can click on this uh, copy to clipboard. And then if I go back over to my code, I can paste that into the model field. So you just have to get the format right for Google and then they'll know which model you want to interact with. So Gemini 2.5 Flash. 
And then what I'll do is I'll just print out the response. So prints response is going to get some information on it. And the most important of that information will be text. So now that I have all that, I can go ahead and run this. So I'll do UV run and then main.py. If you're using a virtual environment, you can just do Python main.py. That would be fine. So UV run main.py and it's going to run and then it's going to give me a response once it's done. Okay, so here in the terminal, we see the response. So there are 35 independent countries in the Americas, and it just gives us more information about like how many are in each area of the Americas, but this is what I wanted. So we see I was able to send the question successfully over to the AI, and it was able to give me the response that I was looking for. So this is all good, but let's say we wanted to change the system prompt. So if you're familiar with uh, chatting with these things, the system prompt basically tells the AI how it's supposed to answer you in a more general way. So it's not the answer to any specific questions, but basically like the role that it takes on. So what I can do is I can add something to the generate content here. I can add a comma and then I can add config. And then inside of config, I'm going to use that types that I imported. So up here from google.genai, I'm gonna use types dot generate content config. And then inside of here, I can pass in system instructions, right? So for my system instructions, let's say uh, you are a rude teacher, okay? So let's run the same thing again, but now we have these system instructions and let's see what the output difference is. Okay, so I'll run it and we get this error. I think this error is simply because I have an extra S on here. So that should be system instruction. So let's try it again. So we can see clearly this is a rude response. <laughs> You're asking me that it's 35, that's basic geography and so on. So you can see that the system instruction is taking and it's still answering the question for me. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I want to send a file over to the AI so I can look at the file and I can get an answer based off something that's in the file. So what I'll do is I'll copy an image over to this project. So I have this image of a cat here. And I'm going to send that image of a cat over to the AI and ask a question about it. So what I'm gonna do is before this generate content, I'm going to call this, let's say uploaded file. And what I wanna do is call client.files.upload and then I can select the file that I have. So cat.jpg. So once I have the uploaded file, what I want to do next is I want to pass that to the contents. So I have the contents here. So I can have a single string here, but once I wanna send more than one thing, I need to make this a list. So let me go ahead and make this a list. And then I'll pass the uploaded file here. And then what I can do is instead of how many countries are in the Americas, I can say, um, what do you see in this image? Okay, so let's go ahead and run it and let's see what the rude teacher says to us. So we see, are you serious? Do you need glasses or did you skip kindergarten? It's a kitten. So we see it understands that I sent it a picture of a cat, a kitten, um, but it's still rude because we have those system instructions. Of course, if I commented this out, then it would be much more friendly. So let's just go ahead and do that. And we get this much more detailed answer. And of course, it's not rude because I disabled the system instruction. All right, so the next thing I wanna demonstrate is I want to demonstrate tool calls. So tool calls are basically the AI calling functions that you have predefined. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function for getting the weather. So we'll call this get current weather. And it's a good idea to give the AI as much context as possible about what this function can do. So what you wanna do is you can use type hints for that. So I'm gonna say the location is going to be a string and then this function is going to return a string. And then another thing I can do is I can create a doc string. So in here, I can just say that this function returns the current weather. And I can say the arguments for this function, well, it's just location for this one. And I can say the city and states, uh, for example, let's say Los Angeles, if I can spell that properly, California, right? And then I'll just return a value. So in a real function, you would do something to actually determine the weather. So let's say you connect to some kind of weather API and you can take that location and then figure out what the weather is like in that location. But to save on time for this video, I'll just put in a value here. I'll say that it's rainy in Los Angeles or any place that the AI uh, uses the tool for. So then what I can do is I can use this config types thing again. 
So instead of the system instruction, I'll just keep that commented out. So what I can do is I can put tool here and then pass in a list of tools that are available. So you just pass in the name of the function and then this Gemini SDK will take care to call that function when the time comes. So let me demonstrate. First, let me duplicate this line so that's still there. And I'll remove the uploaded file and I'll just make this one thing again. And I'll say, what's the weather like in New York City? Right. So this is something that it wouldn't be able to answer on its own, but it's going to see that there is a function available called get current weather that it can call. And then it's going to return that value to the AI and then the AI will use that in the answer. So let's go ahead and see if this works. I'll run this now. And once again, a minor error with this being not a plural, so singular. So I put an S on there and let's run it again. And as we can see, we get this answer which says it needs the state for their current weather. So it's clearly reading the argument information, right? But in my question, I only pass in the city. So in this particular run of the AI, it wasn't smart enough to figure out that New York City is in New York. So what I'll do is I'll run it again before modifying anything, just so you can see how it thinks about uh, New York City. So the first time it ran, it didn't realize that New York City is in New York. But now when I run it again, it simply returns the answer. The weather in New York City is rainy, and that's because I have rainy here. Um, if I put snowy here, and let's say Miami, Florida, and run it again, it's gonna tell me that it's snowing in Miami because this current weather function returns snowy as a value. And we see it here, it is snowy in Miami, Florida. So we can see it's automatically calling this function and returning whatever the function uh, returns in the response. But just remember, in a real function, you would actually do something to determine the answer. So for example, like I said, calling the weather API. So with these examples, I think this is enough to get you started with using the Google Gemini API in Python, because for your purposes, it's probably just going to be a combination of the things that I've shown you here. So generate content you're gonna be using all the time, but you can change like the files that you send or the tools that you use or the system instructions that you use, and you'll get different results based off what you want. So if you've had just a little bit of experience in Python, then most of the code in this video should have been understandable. And the most advanced part of this video was definitely using the type hints. So like here on location, the location value is a string and then the return value. So if you wanna learn more about how type hints work in Python, then watch this video next.